day, millions of packages are delivered to homes and offices in vans. There are more than 4.5 million light commercial vehicles on UK streets. The Ford Transit van is actually the biggest selling vehicle in the country this year, overtaking both the Vauxhall Corsa and the Ford Fiesta. With construction booming and e-commerce soaring, the race is on to find a cleaner and more efficient way of getting stuff from the warehouse to our front door. Which brings me here. Arrival is a British-American electric vehicle startup that's generating serious buzz in the industry. A US stock market flow in early 2021 valued the company at a staggering $13 billion. And that's despite the fact they don't have a single car on the road. So what's the big deal? I've come to their R&D facility in Banbury to find out. Several different electric vehicles are being developed, including a bus and a car specifically for Uber technologies. But it's this van that's likely to be the first to be mass produced. Arrivals say their prices will be comparable to their diesel-powered counterparts. That means you can expect to see them starting from around £24,000. So how are Arrival planning to take on the establishment? Well, rather than using a vast facility with a traditional production line, they plan to use a series of micro factories starting in the United States and also here in the UK. Robotics are at the heart of the micro factory concept. The main man at Arrival is Napo Montano, robot expert and veteran of the European Mars rover project. Napo, your production philosophy seems to be very different. Tell me a little bit about that. In a conventional manufacturing system, everything is based around the concept of the conveyor belt. So the vehicle goes through all the stations. Here we glue, here we screw, here we put the glasses on, etc. Now this makes the system monolithic and large. So the microfactory revolutionizes this approach. So we don't have the conveyor belt anymore, but we have cells. You see one here. So a cluster of robotic arms completely driven by our own software. These robots assemble the vehicles, and there are many inside a microfactory. And then you have mobile robotics, those blocks that move uh, materials around in the factory. So what this means is that we can uh, reduce the footprint of our factory, and instead of having just a few in strategic places around the planet, we're gonna have hundreds of them using local logistic systems and infrastructure, hiring locally, so a much more sustainable model for our planet. Unlike the one-job, one-machine model used in large car factories, these robots are versatile multitaskers. In fact, you could build an entire van in just one of these tennis court-sized cells. Add more cells and you can build more vehicles. Let's take a look around the arrival van then. You can see the shape is quite different to a traditional transit van, for example. And that's mostly down to the fact that they haven't had to design the vehicle around the internal combustion engine. So one thing they've done is to move the passenger compartment as far forward as possible in order to maximize the amount of space they have at the rear. Inside, I can stand up tall, there's loads of space in here. Instead of a solid bulkhead, you actually have a sliding door which gives you nice, easy access to the rear of the cabin, which is where all the magic happens. The rear is incredibly spacious. Now, it's 14 cubic meters, which is one cubic meter more than a diesel Ford Transit. The bodywork on the van is made from thermoplastics rather than steel, which has a couple of advantages. Firstly, it's lighter. And secondly, it's also very resistant to scratches and dents, apparently. Confirmed. As well as needing fewer repairs, the panels can have color embedded into the composite as they're made. So no need for an expensive and time-consuming paint shop. Okay, time to go for a spin in a prototype arrival van to see what it's like out on the road. Well, not the road, it's a prototype, which means I've got to drive it around their car park, but this should give me a good impression of what it's like on the move. First things first, it's very, very easy. All you do is you put it in drive, put your foot down, and then off it goes. But it's all very smooth. You indicate on the left. Um. <laughs> um. 
Well, it is a prototype. Little help, has anyone got a laptop? One quick reset later. Oh, no, oh, we're off, we're off. Literally everything in this vehicle is controlled by this central touchscreen. Everything from the volume to, to the lights, both exterior and interior. At the moment, this might be a little bit too complex for my liking. One more thing which is very important in this type of vehicle is that the turning circle has to be tight. That's pretty good, actually. Because it doesn't have the internal combustion engine at the front, the wheels can articulate loads and that. That's actually better than a lot of cars. There are several different battery options, the biggest of which is a 133 kilowatt hour battery pack, which will provide a range of around 211 miles. It's worth mentioning that Ford are launching the e-Transit and a promising similar range from its much smaller 68 kilowatt hour battery. So a rival are gonna have their work cut out. So in summary then, it's easy to drive. The range with the bigger battery option is probably sufficient and I am looking forward to seeing what the final version of this looks like. Arrival are attracting global interest. In fact, a major US courier company have already ordered 10,000 vans. And Korean automaker Hyundai Kia have invested $100 million and will be a strategic partner. So our arrival here for the long haul, well, the timing does seem right, and they do have the backing of some pretty serious players. Will they be able to take on the transit? I guess only time will tell.